Hello, welcome back to Algebra. The title of this lesson is called Evaluating Functions Part 1. In the last lesson we talked about the concept of a function in algebra, which you'll be using functions pretty much forever, so just kind of get used to the idea. But it's a machine that takes input values in x, and then it calculates and it gives you the output values that we call f of x. So this lesson is all about doing those practice calculations, and we call it, by the way, evaluating the function is what we call it when we take that input and we calculate the output. We call it evaluating the function. So if you had a function uh, f of x uh, is equal to a very simple function x plus 2. First of all what kind of function is this? You should recognize, recognize this as a line mx plus b so you know it's a line and we say we want to evaluate the function at x is equal to 0 and evaluate the function at x is equal to negative 1. So when the value that we put in the middle here, this tells me the value of x that I want to evaluate the function at, and I want to do it two different times. So the way you write it mathematically is you write the f, you open the parentheses, and you take the value that you're trying to evaluate, and then you substitute it in for x. So 0 plus 2, as you all know, is 2. So on your paper, you just say f of 0 is equal to 2. This is what you write down. Now you have to be careful because up until now we've been using parentheses to mean multiplication. But in this case, when we're writing functions down, um, it never means multiplication. It means the function f evaluated at x is equal to 0 gives the value 2. That's what this means. So it does not mean f times 0. And by the way, the letter f is almost never used for anything in math other than functions. So when you see f, you always know it's a function. Now to do the other one here, we do exactly the same thing. f evaluated at x is equal to negative 1 means we stick negative 1 in here, and we get, what do we get? 1. Negative 1 plus 2 gives us positive 1, so we say f evaluated at negative 1 gives us 1. We circle those answers. All right. So we're just going to continue working down the way here. This is mostly an exercise in substitution, but we're kind of getting getting used to the idea of what a function is. You also very commonly will see the function g to represent, uh, <clears throat> the letter g to represent a function. Uh, basically it doesn't matter what letter of the alphabet you use, but typically you'll see f, you'll see g. In physics sometimes you'll see u and v, but almost always in algebra it's going to be f, almost always, sometimes g of x. So uh, just, just kind of get used to that. You might see g of x representing a function that we're naming g. So this function of x, is 1 minus 2 times whatever x is. And let's say we want to evaluate it at x is equal to negative 2, and we want to evaluate it at x is equal to positive 3. So how do we evaluate that? We take these values in and we stick them into the function. g evaluated at negative 2 means that we take and then we stick it right into the value of x here. So we have 1, then we have a minus sign here, but this multiplication is actually negative 4. Minus, and this multiplication is negative 4, or you could write it as 1 plus 4, however you want to do it. It's going to end up being 1 plus 4, and so you're going to end up with 5 for the answer there. And so what you're going to get is g evaluated at negative 2 is equal to 5, and this is what you want to circle on your test. The function g evaluated at x is equal to negative 2 gives you this value. All right, so the next one, when x is equal to 3, means we take g, we evaluate it at the position or of x equal to 3. And we say it's 1 minus 2 times 3 in here. So it's 1 minus 6, and 1 minus 6, as you know, is negative 5. So g evaluated at x is equal to 3 is negative 5. And that's the final answer for that one. And again, we're just going to continue cruising along and doing different functions, getting slightly more complex each time. Let's say we have the function of x as being the absolute value of 2 minus x. So now we have an absolute value in the mix and want to evaluate it when x is equal to 0 and also when x is equal to negative 2. So we'll switch colors a little bit here and we will say f evaluated when x is equal to 0 is equal to 2 minus 0 with the absolute value around it. So it means it's the absolute value of 2 which you, as you know is just 2. So f evaluated at 0 is 2. That's the function evaluated there as well. And then finally, we will take the last one and we will say f evaluated at x is negative 2 is absolute value of 2 minus, now be careful, it's minus, but x is negative, so you should wrap it in parentheses, just to make sure you don't make any mistakes. 2 minus whatever x is, which is negative, so wrap it up like that. 
and then you'll have two, and this negative times negative gives you positive, which equals absolute value of four, which e equals four. So you write your final answer as negative, f of negative two is four. All right. So again, we're not doing anything too crazy. We're just kind of getting practice with evaluating functions. So what if you had the function h, which is pretty unusual to use h for a function name, but you can, you can use anything you want. h is a function of x, and that's gonna be equal to 10 divided by x squared plus one. 10 divided by x squared plus one. A complicated looking function, right? You would definitely have to plot points to figure out what this is gonna look like. Let's evaluate it at x is equal to zero and also at x is equal to one. All right, so for the first one, <clears throat> we have h evaluated at zero. Here we just plug the value in, 10 over zero squared plus one in the bottom. So what we have is 10 over, this is just gonna be zero, this is gonna be one, which means you're gonna get 10 as the answer. So h evaluated at zero, is 10. That's the final answer for this. And then we'll evaluate now at x is equal to 1. So h evaluated at 1 is 10 over x, whoops, not x, we're going to have to substitute in for 1 now, 1 squared plus 1. So we'll have 10 over, this is going to give you 1, so 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, which is going to give you 5. So h evaluated at 1 is 5. All right, I only have one more, just to give you a little practice. What if your function looked like, getting a little more complex now, f of x uh, is equal to one minus x on the top divided by x cubed on the bottom. And we wanted to evaluate this at x is equal to two, and again, we wanna evaluate it at x is equal to negative one. So again, you have to go through the mechanics of the algebra, but basically it's the same thing. You stick the value of of x in two locations. Notice in all of these previous ones, we had an x here, we had an x here, and for the other ones, we only have one value of x. Here we have an x value in two different locations, but it's the same thing. You just stick this value of x in both locations. So what we have is f evaluated at two is one minus two on the top, because we're sticking two in there, and then it's two cubed on the bottom. Now what is one minus two? It's negative one. Now what is two cubed? That's two times two times two. So Two times two is four, four times two is eight, so you have eight. So what you have is negative one eighth. So you write it as f evaluated at two is negative one eighth. And it's perfectly fine to get fractions for answers uh, when you're evaluating functions. Now for our last one, or I should say our, um, our, our, our next one here, we're gonna evaluate at x is equal to negative one. You say f evaluated at negative one is one minus now here you have to be careful, one minus, but x is negative, so you should wrap it in parentheses to make sure you don't make any mistakes. One minus this value of negative one. And same thing on the bottom, it's negative one cubed, you should wrap it in parentheses to make sure you don't make any sign errors, because if you don't put the parentheses here, you might forget to cube the negative sign as well. Now on the top, what you have is, you have the uh, one minus uh, negative one, so you have double negatives here, so it becomes a plus, so it's two. And on the bottom, I'm gonna help you out and write it like this. This is negative one times negative one times negative one. That's why I say it's important to wrap the parentheses to make sure you carry the signs through, because here now you can see that you have, um, on the top you have two, but on the bottom you have negative one times negative one's positive one, but times another negative one gives you negative one. So the answer you get is actually negative two for the answer. And this function evaluated at negative one is negative two. And that's the final answer. So in this lesson, we wanted to re-emphasize the idea of a function, being a machine that takes, a mathematical machine that takes input values, performs a calculation, whatever the function happens to be, that's the calculation that's done, and then you get outputs that we call f of x. So here we just started with very simple functions, working our way through the complexity, mostly getting practice with substituting in and doing the algebra, but the, this is how functions are evaluated. Now we have another lesson here, we're gonna have slightly more complex functions, but in the next lesson we'll have exactly the same concept of plugging this guy in and evaluating. So make sure you can do all of these problems and then follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue evaluating functions.